The Realcaster video has basically been my dream podcast setup and today it's got a free firmware update that actually blows my mind a little. I'm going to show you a few quick demos now then I'll come back with a proper structured review of the whole thing once I've got my thoughts straight. Because honestly, there's a lot in here and it's a bit overwhelming right now in a good way. So what's in the update? The headline is NDI support. What NDI is, is video over your network instead of HDMI cables that makes a mess to be honest and it enables certain devices to be used as sources in this device itself. You get four inputs and one output so you get a separate recorder as well. The thing about the feature is that this thing needs to be connected to your router via ethernet for it to work at all. So the way I connect it in order to use NDI is that ethernet straight to the router, my laptop on ethernet as well. My phones can stay on clean five gigahertz SSD. I would recommend using a dedicated router so the entire system can have its own network. You don't pollute it with people browsing the internet or what have you. Now you need to match your frame rate everywhere. You pick 25 FPS or 30 FPS because I'm in Indonesia and you wouldn't run into trouble. Cable wise, Cat5e is enough, but Cat6 is the way to go for future proofing. Now Rode also enables you to use your phone as a source or actually multiple phones, four of them, like I said earlier, because four inputs. If you're using the Rode Capture app, basically you just go on the Rode Capture app, just position it wherever you want to and then turn on NDI and it will basically turn up as a source. You can use it as a top-down angle, a close-up angle, what have you. And this is actually quite interesting because it enables dual cam front and back simultaneously. So if you're in a pinch and you need a podcast, if you want to shoot an interview or what have you, you can turn it on. Just use one camera. I mean one phone as two angles front and back. You can send the signals independently to the roadcaster video taking up two slots or combine the final mix and send it straight in. Another feature that Rode added is that you can now use a source as an overlay. So for example, I want to switch an angle to explain to you what my lens is like so. So I have a, an angle here and an angle right there. Right, it seems weird that I'm not talking to you anymore because I want to be on screen all the time. So what I can do is that I can use camera one as an overlay so it stays there all the time even when I'm changing my scenes. Look at that. Yeah. Very useful feature to have. Of course, you can expand it towards the other three more angles. So yeah, it's awesome. One of the updates that I really like, in fact, it might be my favorite one is rounded corners. It sounds really trivial, I know, but rounded corners improves your layout instead of that boxy PIP or overlays and what have you that makes your video look half done. You can actually round the corners now. It's one of the most often asked features. It sounds like a really small change, but it enables you to put a layer, a PIP on the corner or over something, round it out completely, make a circular cutout instead of going into editing and doing it manually. It saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of computing power once you get it done. I promise you, this is one of the things that a lot of people will use. Another feature that Rode added is Luma keying. So what is keying? Basically, you know those YouTubers that uses green screens and blue screens all the time and replace their background with something else, whether it's a photograph or a video. It's basically the same thing, except that they use the levels of brightness in your source to replace the background or whatever you want with. So basically it will take away the brightest parts of your image or the darkest parts of your image, depending on how you set it. But here's the thing though, I might be the one being stupid here because for the life of me, I cannot find the right settings for my application. So I've emailed Rode asking for help. They are educating me and I will follow up the feature in the next full review. Yeah, so sorry. 
The next feature on the update enables you to use the Roadcaster Pro 2 and the Roadcaster Duo as individual inputs. You get two inputs on those devices. You can use those as individual sources for auto switching. I'm going to try to source one of those devices and show you what I'm talking about. Basically, it just expands your input in a proper way. It integrates those two devices more into the Roadcaster video. Now I talked about the update bringing this device to another level, to a serious professional level. What I'm talking about is PTZ control, pan, tilt, and zoom cameras. You can switch your PTZ cameras, four of them, over the network without an additional capture device or addi an additional box. You can control the pan, tilt, and zoom. You can store and record presets, and you can change them in scenes. I don't have a PTZ here because they are expensive, but that is future proofing to me. I can bring this, rock up to a location with PTZ cameras in a television studio, in a professional studio, and control the entire studio using this. That is really amazing because if I'm not mistaken, devices like that, you need to pay a lot more money and Rode is giving this update away for free. Now let's talk about performance expectations. Of course, your wired sources will be instant. Your wireless sources will have a bit of a delay. It's stable once the frame rates match and for my use case, talking heads, podcasts, and other things, it doesn't affect much. You want your network to be relatively clean, so I would recommend a dedicated router for the entire ecosystem or whatever you call it to keep your internet browsers away. You don't want your editor watching YouTube or playing mobile games on your network. It will just slow it down. Now let's talk a little bit about what I'm really excited about. Let's get back to NDI a little bit. I just remembered this, but Atomos has this thing called Atomos Connect. and. I think it's over NDI, I haven't tested it, but it might work. So imagine this, you have four cameras at a wedding or an event, and every single one of them is streaming that footage into this device. You using the NDI out to send it to another device and going live. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's really powerful, isn't it? So right, yeah, finally, free firmware, NDI included, lots of exciting and professional features included. It reduces converters, it reduces your cables, it adds more features and usability to your roadcaster video, covering a lot of situations you might come across. Again, I will do a deep dive review once I incorporate it into my workflow and probably borrow or try some devices that, you know, or even add some devices like the Rodecaster Pro 2 or the Duo, maybe borrow a PTZ camera and show you what I'm talking about. Right, so that's the update. See you in the next one.